and I think the one last thing that I'm going to leave you with is one of the things we need to do as participants in this process, as constituents, is, is try to engender greater collegiality among our legislators. As I said, my father used to be in the legislature in the 60s and 70s, and he had been involved in government prior to that. And you know, at the time in the 60s, there were 25 lobbyists in the state of New Jersey. They really didn't have the, the registration laws that we have now. Today, we have over 1,000. Part of that is because under the new laws, they have become very restrictive as to what you can do as a lobbyist, and you have to be very detailed about what you're doing. A lobbyist in New Jersey is defined as anybody who, who earns more than $100 in a three-month period lobbying on behalf of, of, a, of an interest group, whether you're influencing, educating, sharing communications with a, a legislator or anything like that. $100 isn't a lot of money in three months to make, believe me. So a lot of us have to be registered as lobbyists. And you face great fines if you're not registered. So a registered lobbyist like myself registers with the Election Law Commission in New Jersey. All of that information is online. You can go in there. You can find out every lobbyist registered, who they represent. You then can go in and find out how much money they spend every year. We have to, to file detailed annual reports on the expenses that we incur for our office, for our staff, communication, and what we call benefit passing. That is anything that I may do for a legislator, any benefit that I may provide him, whether it's a round of golf, whether it's a lunch, whether it's taking him on a trip, um, whether it's giving him a t-shirt or anything like that. If it's above $25, I have to report that. I will tell you right now, because of those laws, and I know a lot of us were talking earlier about the influence of money, the benefit passing from le lobbyists or the interests to legislators has dropped considerably. In the last year alone, 30%. One, because we know we can't do that, and, and I don't know, some of it was kind of gross in the past anyway. I think a little bit was excessive. Um, but two, because legislators don't want to deal with it. It may become a, a newspaper story, you know, they don't want to have to deal with all of that, and they do want to, want to kind of keep sort of a playing field level for everybody. So that has gone down a lot, and that is a and by the way, all those laws are passed by the legislature. And, and signed into law by the governor. And it affects them directly, whether it's the amount of money they can raise, who can contribute, how much benefit they can get from, from lobbyists and interest groups. So, you know, I give them a lot of credit for changing that. But collegiality is important. In the day when my father served, there used to be a, they used to have booze rooms in the state house. They used to go out and drink together after sessions. Politics should be like a rugby match. When you're on the floor, when you're doing your thing or you're on the field, you should beat the living daylights out of the other guy. Right? If you're a Republican and you're driving a policy, you should beat that guy up rhetorically on the other side of the aisle. Because that's your interest. That's what you're advocating for. Your people at home in your district need your support, need that thing. But at the end of the day, you need to be able to get along. You need to be able to build bridges with the other party. You need their votes. Because at the end of the day, it's not about one party surviving over the other. It's not about one individual rising through the chairs of the legislature to be a Senate president or a speaker or the governor. It's about how do we move New Jersey forward together. I like to believe that what I do, I have access, I guess, with legislators because I know them. I've been in Trenton for almost 20 years. I served in a variety of capacities. But I build coalitions that benefit everybody. I think that that's the way to go. That's the way to be a lobbyist. And that's the way to benefit the state of New Jersey. I've been born and raised in New Jersey. I love this state. I want to stay here. I want to see it continue to grow. Right now, we're not really growing. We're suffering a lot of pains right now, and our budget's going to be one of them coming forward. So, you know, together we all can work. We all can drive things forward. One of my best experiences was working for a nonprofit in Newark. I started in Trenton as a, as a legislative staffer, as, as we heard. So I, I saw how bills were formed. I saw how the paper was drafted, right? Then I went to Treasury. I was in charge of the, I was a communications expert in charge of the budget. We saw how money impacts government. Can't run government without money. Can't run your house without an income, right? And then I went out to a department, still working for the administrative staff. I became Deputy Commissioner of Labor, where we provide real services to people based on laws that are written, based on budgets that are funded, and money that goes out, whether we provide benefits to, to people who are laid off through UI, whether it's workers' comp, whether it's helping people get jobs. And we always think we know what we're doing. Then I had the benefit of working for a nonprofit, an organization that was helping people get jobs based on the laws that were written, the money that was provided, and the work that I did as a, as a, as a commissioner of labor defining policy. And you know what? We were so dislocated from the truth, it wasn't even funny. It was the greatest experience of my life. And I say that simply because what I do is represent interest groups. 
people who, who have jobs, who want to promote and protect their interests. I don't know what they do. I have to learn what they do. But through my experience, I can advocate for them and for others like them to live in a better state that has good laws that actually benefit and protect their interests. I think that's the greatest value that a lobbyist can bring when they do it right. On that note, I'm going to end and ask anybody questions. I could do this for hours, by the way. I have so much I'd love to tell you, but. Uh, just recent studies and what we've done in certain classes has looked at the lobbyist role in influencing Supreme Court decisions. Yeah. You've talked a lot about your influence and your relationship with legislators. I was wondering if you had any experience and perspective on how you've uh, lobbyists and maybe you yourself have maybe uh, influenced debatably the real policy makers in New Jersey for uh, in, in your experience. In the court you're talking about. The court, yes. You know, I, I didn't even get into that and that is a great question. Um, there are many who think in New Jersey we have a very active judicial system and some of the people who came in to talk about issues before, school funding, um, affordable housing, uh, a number of different issues, the legislature has to respond to court mandates. And that is a really good question. And it has become part of the problem in New Jersey to solving some of the problems that we, we have here. And part of that is that, that the legislature, the legislature, I guess, is both a reactive and a proactive uh, body. The court tends to make it far more reactive and not necessarily in a good way. So I have been involved, I guess, on the, on the side of school funding in terms, I guess, more of an ancillary way. Uh, school funding, as you know, uh, you've had some, some speakers come and talk about it, so I don't want to get too deep into it. But um, school funding decision by the straight Supreme Court, Abbott versus Burke, which I think we agree with, every child in the state of New Jersey should have equal access to education, to a quality education. But that costs money, and there is really no equality in terms of how we devise that. So in the legislature, we talk about defining a budget. How are we going to provide programs for other money for other programs? Unfortunately, through the court, we have to provide you know billions of dollars for 28 to 30 districts in New Jersey because they they don't raise enough money, they don't have enough base like you would have here in, you know in Madison. It's a pretty good pretty good community, you have good schools, you fund those schools. You make conscious decisions to pay more taxes to have a good school system. In Newark, we don't have that. There isn't the tax base, right? So the court says, okay, legislature, I know you tried to make changes, but the reality is you're not making enough change, and those kids in Newark deserve to have more money. So you may spend eleven dollars or $12,000 per student in Madison. I want you to spend 28000 or 35000 in Newark for that kid. That doesn't buy a better education for that student. There are bigger issues that are involved. And what has happened is it creates great stress. Remember I talked about the regional stuff? So what you've done, in a, in a sense, is you've created tension between urban and suburban districts, whether they're legislators, right? If I'm a legislator for Newark, I'm a senator, I'm going to fight to get that $35,000 for my students. If I'm a guy from, from Madison, I'm going to say, wait a minute, my kids are paying $12,000, we're paying $12,000, a piece of that now has to go to Newark, so my kid gets, gets a little less education or a little less option for programs. And, you know, what about the results? What about performance? What about finding a better way to do it? So that has an implication across all of legislation because we can't then raise a lot more money to do other programs and you still fight that battle. So it creates stress for legislators, you know, because guys have policies and egos and you got to deal with that. Um, so yes, I think that that is a big issue. I have only had really the school construction, uh, school um, uh, funding program because of some of the work I've done in Newark uh, and trying to get legislators to, to move in certain directions on, on broader policy. But you know, they get their nose out of, out of joint because they don't like the court dictating to them. It's a big issue. I don't know if I answered your question fully. Um, I personally haven't had a lot of experience with it. Um, but again, it's court mandated, and the legislature deals every day with it. Some of it has been discussion about constitutional changes, because we have a term called qual uh, thorough and efficient education for students. Uh, that's in the Constitution, so that's been sort of the, the banter back and forth. <laughs>